Are you lost in the maze of anti-aging advice, products, and supplements? And are we chasing dreams or reality? In this book club series, we'll be delving into the real science behind anti-aging claims via the insights from the book, How Not to Age. We'll be guiding you through the complex, complex world of aging and debunking myths, as well as revealing truths. So together, let's discover what truly works in our pursuit of youth and vitality. Welcome to the first book club session covering Dr. Greger's How Not to Age. Oh, I'm so excited. So glad to be doing this with you all. Today we'll be covering just the first, I think, 14 pages. I previously said that we'd be doing two to three sections or 20 to 30 pages per video, but I realized that I cannot fit all this into one short video. So I'm trying to keep it short, keep it just nappy so that we can actually discuss this properly. So moving on to recap the preface or introduction before AMPK, that'll be second, that'll be a separate video. In the beginning of How Not to Age, Dr. Greger, who recently turned 50 while writing the book, Happy Belated Birthday, he talks about how aging is an important topic, just like the issues in the weight loss world. Because we often think about dying, but we don't think about living and aging right? Isn't that fascinating? They're so interlinked, but we don't always think about them. So both the diet and anti-aging businesses make billions of dollars and they often sell products that make big promises that they can't always keep. In fact, in fact, the anti-aging industry known for selling products that don't really work has gone to the point that historically they've been questioned by government entities. Yet a lot of people in America still try these anti-aging methods, even though they might not be backed by science. That's me. <laughs> okay, I do that. So it's okay if that's you too. So the book also looks at how some people have used scientific discoveries to make money, both in the past and today. So it's not all bad, right? It's not all like pseudoscience. Uh, for example, uh, there's been business of dermatology, facelifts, you know, red laser, you know, red light therapy, etc. There's so much going on there. So it's not all bad. So the book also talks about the difference between experts who study aging and see it as a normal part of life versus those who actually believe we can fight aging. In fact, he mentions that it's actually really important to be careful. While being careful, we should also recognize real scientific progress. In, and then from there, the introduction also highlights that we should trust facts more than just stories. And you know what? Uh, I highly recommend, I'll put it somewhere, highly recommend watching my video on the hierarchy of scientific truth or hierarchy of scientific evidence, high, uh, scientific evidence so that you can understand why, what is the difference between story versus evidence or story versus studies, okay? And talking about evidence, the book has a lot of references in scientific studies that readers can look up online. And I will include a short clip to show you how uh, users can use a QR code or the link and directly access the, the references link, uh, the references mentioned in the book. So that if you haven't done it before or this is your first time, we can do it together. And last but not least, Dr. Gregor mentions that the book was so long that because of all the references in it that all of the references he included that they actually had to put some of the information online and added video links to the book instead so i will also link those in the description below for those of you who don't have the book yet or i don't know if you want to watch the video with me i'll be linking this below so we can all go and enjoy this beautiful content and uh in addition because we talked about in our last video uh, dr greg really encourages readers to think critically about what they read and not just accept anything everything he says without questioning it. he doesn't want you to believe him blindly okay so same thing with me i don't want you to believe everything i say blindly when i ask questions when i say anything please challenge me ask me questions i would love to talk about it with you so moving on from there, I do have some reflections I would love to share. I have seven, 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 seven. I have some reflections I would love to share with you. The beginning of the book shows how hard it is to understand the anti-aging business because companies want to make money. And this really made me think about, you know, how wanting making, how wanting to make money can really change or influence the health information we get, right? That's an influencing factor. Number two, uh, Dr. Greger really focuses on using facts and evidence to give advice. And this practice really shows us how important it is to think carefully and make smart choices about our health. 
well, evidence-based practices, right? And number three, uh, the book has a lot of references and video links. And the fact that he's doing this makes me, make th makes me think about how really important and beneficial it is to be open or open source, as we say in tech, open source in order to let everyone find out about the science and the knowledge behind this information, behind these findings. And number, I, I'm really bad at was that three, four? That was three. This is four. Number four. Uh, the book also talks about the different views of aging between people who study and think it's part of life versus people who think it's actually a disease process and then so that for, for us to stop it. So this makes me think like, you know, in, in society, you know, what do we believe about getting older and trying to live longer and how can that change depending on where we live or depending on the people around us? And number five, uh, the book makes me think about really is it right to sell aging treatments that might not work? And like, I, 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 as a customer or consumer, am I protected? And is the information presented to me? Like, is it factual? And is that information scrutinized enough in order for me to fully understand what I'm buying? I don't know. Number six, I'm horrible at counting. Who let me in this? Number six, uh, the, comp the way that companies make money really affect how we see aging. And it makes me, oh, that's a, that's a dog fluff. Uh, makes me think about, you know, how businesses that want profit can change the way we look at healthcare. Like, are they selling something to me because I need it? Or are they selling something to me because it's, it's, it's profitable, right? And I hate that I have to talk about that because it's actually a very controversial topic. But I encourage you to think about it and discuss if you like to. And moving on, I have seven discussion questions. I know I said six earlier, but I said seven, six. I'm, I'm horrible at numbers. I have seven of <laughs> seven discussion questions and for you. And if I know this is not a live session, I would love to do a live session one day, but I have seven discussion questions. I would love for you to answer below or comment below or tweet me or DM me. I would love to hear your thoughts because I don't know. I, I think talking about this information makes it more fun. So question number one, uh, how does the commercialization of the aging industry affect the quality of information available to the public? Like, what do you think? Number two, uh, why do you think it's important to separate fact from misinformation in the field of anti-aging or in the field of anything? Well, okay, let's focus on field of anti-aging. You know, why is it important to do that? And what kind of consequences or benefits does it have? Number three, what are the ethical concerns surrounding the marketing of unproven anti-aging interventions? Number four, how can consumers critically evaluate the legitimacy of scientific breakthroughs in the health and wellness industry? You know, how, how can we do it? And how, or how do you do it, right? And number five, how do you think the clash between gerontology and anti-aging impacts research as well as public perception of aging? Uh, doctor, for example, in the book, Dr. Her talks about how uh, this labeling and, and changing of perception around obesity led to discoveries. Okay, I'm giving it away, but I'm curious, how do you think this, this clash between the two impacts research and public perception of aging? Number six, as, as cool guys do, number six, uh, what measures can individuals take to ensure that they are making informed decisions about their health and longevity? Or what do you do? I, I read, so I... That's how I do it. And number seven, uh, what motivates individuals to pursue anti-aging interventions, even when it's not pursued by or not supported by science? Like, what motivates you? Or I, I know for me, it's, it's usually pictures. <laughs> A lot of times, it's influencers. I hate to admit it. Uh, usually, I try to follow more science, but I do also fall to victim to marketing. So I'm curious, what motivates you, or what do you think motivates people to pursue anti-aging interventions, even though if it's not supported by science? Uh, please let me know your thoughts below. I would love to hear. I would love to know. And thank you so much for joining in. I hope you guys will stay curious, stay hungry, stay everything, and keep reading. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Me too. That's me. <laughs> okay, I do that. So that's it.